Hello everybody. Today I'm going to explain how do you obtain a sawtooth wave by adding a bunch of sine waves using the process of additive synthesis. All right, so what is a sine wave? A sine wave or a sinusoid is a mathematical curve that describes a smooth periodic oscillation. And a sawtooth wave is a non-sinusoidal waveform named for its resemblance to the teeth of a plain tooth saw, like the one with the serrated edge. All right, so now let's look at the spectrograph of a 500 hertz sawtooth wave and understand what is it composed of. All right, this is a spectrograph of a 500 hertz sawtooth wave. So as you can observe here, the peak is at 500 hertz, which is nothing but the fundamental frequency. And it is followed by harmonics, odd and even harmonics. So the frequencies following are 1000, 1500, 2000 and so on. So a sawtooth wave is composed of both even and odd harmonics and that's a very valuable information because we're going to reverse engineer and we're going to play all the all the harmonics, the odd and even, along with the fundamental so as to obtain the sawtooth wave. Alright, this is a Fourier series for a sawtooth wave and as you can observe here, you know, the K represents the harmonics all the way from 1 to infinity. And once you plug in those values, you end up getting the final equation where y is sine omega t plus half time sine to omega t and so on. So this represents a fundamental frequency and these are the har second harmonics or overtones. Alright, this is a sine wave or the first harmonic. So this looks like a pure tone and, you know, the equation is sine of omega t. I'm calling omega t as x. So this is a pure tone and then now we're going to add... A bunch of harmonics, so, you know, starting from the second, third, and fourth, and I'll show you how it gradually turns into a sawtooth wave. All right, so now in this case, we have added the second harmonic to the first fundamental frequency, and this is how it looks like. So it's gradually, you know, starting to drift away from being a sine wave. All right, so now here the second and third harmonic are added to the first harmonic, and this is how the graph looks like. All right, in this case, we have added the second, third, and the fourth harmonic to the fundamental frequency, and this is how the graph looks like. And we can observe here that now it's picking up a shape, you know, a shape of the sawtooth wave, except for the curves, which will get flattened, you know, as we add even more harmonics. All right, now we have added 20 harmonics after the fundamental, and this is how the graph looks like. And I'd say it pretty much looks like a regular sawtooth wave, all the curves that existed, you know, when we were adding like the first, second, and third harmonics have flattened out. And it, yeah, it pretty much traces out a sawtooth wave and we can say it has achieved convergence on replicating a regular sawtooth wave. All right, this is a comparison of real and ideal sawtooth wave. In this example, when I mentioned real, it means a sawtooth wave that has been formed by additive synthesis of, you know, up to the 21st harmonic and an ideal sawtooth wave is like, you know, an additive synthesis of infinite harmonics. Okay, so when we compare these, you know, by the way, the blue circles are the real sawtooth wave and the magenta line is the ideal sawtooth wave. So as we observe here, you know, the, the graph, the real sawtooth wave traces out pretty much uh, accurately the ideal sawtooth wave except at the regions of the transition. You know, the, the region where the sawtooth wave rises rapidly to the peak and then falls down. So in that region, there is a discontinuity. I mean, we experience a similar scenario, you know, as we experience in square waves. You know, there is a discontinuity and, you know, it, the transition cannot be instantaneous, at least for real sawtooth waves. So due to that region, you know, there's, it, it's, it's not accurate in that region, but otherwise it does a great job tracing out the ideal sawtooth wave. Now, sawtooth waves are really good. They are rich, you know, they have a rich sound quality because of their, you know, presence of all the harmonics, not just the odd and even, but everything. So it sounds much brighter and not as dull as a sine wave or a triangle wave. All right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you understood it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.